Good morning, Connecticut is the basketball capital of the world. The UConn men's basketball team won its second basketball national championship in a row. Happened just six days ago. Here to talk about the unbelievable season and how the team is expected to change over the next year. Our Channel 3 Sports Director Joe Zone and Wayne Norman, the longtime one of the voices of the Huskies, along with Mike Crispino, who has provided color commentary for the team's games for decades. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. You said the basketball capital of the world during the season, I remember the Creighton crowd, remember that night, the home crowd, and how big that was? And I remember saying to Coach Early, it's one thing to say you're the basketball capital of the world. It's another thing to be. And that night, I mean, they were, and then obviously from then on, they are. Def this is definitely the basketball capital of the world. Well, no doubt about it. And if you're a UConn fan, you're proud to talk about it. And you look at, you know, I know we're here to talk about the men's team, but gosh, the women's team had a lot of adversity, and they made the Final Four, which is not nothing to sniff at either. When you've been watching these games, doing color commentary since 1979, is that an accurate number? Yeah, it was my first games, yes. So in all that time, where does this year's squad stack up? Number one, I think it's the best team ever. I think it's easily the best team ever. Maybe number two on that list is 2004 with Ben Gordon, Emeka Okafor, Talik Brown, Charlie Villanueva, guys like that. But the dominance that this team showed winning their six NCAA games by a total of 140 points. 140. There, was, there were all blowouts. I know the Alabama game was close midway through the second half, but you know, you're not supposed to do that in the Elite Eight, the Sweet 16, and on into the Final Four as well. This team could do it at both ends of the court. They could score, and they could lock you up defensively. Go ahead, Joe. To that point, defensively, I listened to the Purdue coach after the game. He said the big difference between UConn and many of the other good teams they play is Every other team has one guy who can shut you down on defense, maybe two. But he said, UConn, every single guy in that team plays defense, and you have no answers because they're shutting us down everywhere. And I thought that was a really interesting perspective from a coach who just lost the game. There's a number of X factors in why this team is so good. Number one, the return of Tristan Newton, who ended up being the Final Four most outstanding player. But the other that I think of when you talk about that and lockdown defense, maybe the all-time best defensive player for UConn was Ricky Moore. But when we got Steph Castle, you knew he was a great player, a great offensive player. I will admit, when he came to UConn, I did not realize how good a defender he would be. And the fact that Coach Hurley had such faith in him as a defensive player to put him on the opponent's highest scoring guards. And he did a phenomenal job all year long on that. Got in foul trouble once in a while. Who doesn't? But I thought that Castle's defense is an un understated part well, of the story. And, and Hurley talked a lot when he gave credit to him, to Ca Castle and his family and his upbringing, saying this is a kid who now there's talk of him being the number one pick in the draft. And he came in here was selfless, thinking about team. They gave him an assignment. He did it. Not about me, me, me. That's pretty refreshing. That kid never made any noise like that. Never any trouble outside the basketball court, on the basketball court. He just played every day. And occasionally get a 20-point game, but he really wasn't out there to score. They had enough other guys who could score. Wait, I want to ask you from your uh, perch looking at these games, uh, uh, there's been a lot made about Dan Hurley and some of his antics, his uh, yelling at the refs. He gave uh, Cam Spencer a little shove in the final game uh, to, to get him moving, uh, which the ref didn't like. A lot of other Later fan on, bases. Spencer gave him a shove, too, a little <laughs> chest bump. <laughs> he did, indeed. Uh, a lot of other fan bases are not too fond of our coach, and I'm not sure I'd be fond of him if he was somebody else's, but he's our guy, and I like him. What do you make of it? Well, you're saying he's the only guy that does that? A lot of coaches do that. He's a little over the top at times, but I, I don't have a problem with it. Then again, he's the UConn coach, so if they win games and that works, I'm so impressed by what goes on behind the scenes. We get access to watching practices, including in the NCAA, including in the Final Four, and to watch how tight their practices are. And that being said, how loose they are. They're singing songs and chanting and stuff, not during the hard coaching mm -hmm. stuff, but they were really uh, a loosey-goosey bunch, and I think it showed on the floor when the games began. Well, you can tell when a team likes each, uh, each other. Uh, you know, there, there's the old saying, winning is the best deodorant. It, it wasn't needed here. Uh, they, they were winning, but they also seemed to legitimately get along. Did you get that, Phil? Uh, every time I was there, each one always talked about the other. I mean, look at Donovan Klingon. That guy could have said a lot of me, me, me. And everything was about everybody else on the team. They all seem to share the glory with somebody else. One thing I said on the air in the championship game, I said, yeah, Donovan Klingon probably hasn't gone against a 7-4 guy like Edie before. But let's take the other side of the coin. 
I don't think Edie has gone against a physical presence like Donovan Klingon before. And for the most part, Klingon did a good job on him. I know, 37 points and so forth. But what they did was they gave Edie his points. They let Klingon play him one-on-one -on -one for the most part. They shut down the rest of the team, and that worked. What that reminded me of, Eric, was the 91 NCAAs when UConn beat Shaquille O'Neal in LSU. Shaq got 27 points, 16 rebounds. The rest of the team couldn't score, and UConn pulled off an upset because they let the big guy get the points, but nobody else could score. Same thing. Well, we talked a lot about Klingon after the foot injury and was he back to his conditioning. Edie looked downright gassed halfway through the first half, and you were thinking, well, is he going to have the, you know, the tank here to do this? And it turned out he, he couldn't do it by himself. Donovan really increased his stock. He played so well, especially the last month of the year. And I think Castle did the same thing as well. I want to talk a little bit about the future. A lot of question marks out there. I, we know, you know, Tristan, Cam Spencer, we know some guys are definitely gone, but you've got guys like Hassan Diara who has eligibility and, and, and can come back and maybe be a leader. Are we hopeful for next year? I know this year in the Big East they were picked third and they certainly showed uh, the writers that there were some, some mistakes there. What do you think? <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts on that, but what changes now is the transfer portal. Hurley used that judiciously. He had four incoming transfer portal guys in the 2023 national championship. Cam Spencer, of course, was a difference maker for UConn. If you lose guys to the NBA, you can go to the portal and snag who you want. Now, maybe because they were still playing in the NCAA, Dan got a little late start in this, but I think UConn is a hot property, and I think someone's going to want to come here, not just to play at UConn, but to play for Coach Hurley. Yeah, and think about that. If you were a kid in the portal, you just seen UConn and Hurley win back-to-back -back championships and what seven, six, seven guys going to the NBA. That's what these kids want to do in the portal. And talk about the portal. I mean, was there anybody who we didn't like more than Cam Spencer this year? I mean, a guy who just came in and changed. Well, and after a lot of belly aching after Nick Timberlake went to Kansas. And then here comes this guy who is just the perfect fit. Seems like he'd been there forever. And yet it was just that one year of brilliance. And he took coach's personality. Yeah. And he maybe even elevated well, he, it a little he bit. Had, we're all out of time, but he yeah. had the great line. Someone asked him about it, and he said both he and Dan Hurley were basketball psychopaths, and I thought, I could see that. That's good. <laughs> Wayne Norman, well, Joe Zone, we're all out of time. I appreciate you both being here. Let's do it again next year after they win the third. What do you say? You've got the, you've got the banner. Maybe we'll see if we can put a 25 on that. Seven is heaven. There you go. Thank you both.